Hey everyone, and welcome back to the NREMT Paramedic Exam Prep Show. These 40 practice questions cover a selection of content on cardiology and resuscitation. For hundreds more questions like these, make sure you get Brainscape's NREMT Paramedic flashcards. Okay, let's get started. Question one. If you have a 12 lead ECG, how should you alter the placement of the limb leads? The leads should be placed on the wrists and the ankles. Question two, how much time passes in one small box of ECG paper? 0.04 seconds. Question three, what does the QRS complex represent? Ventricular depolarization. Question four, how do you use the six second method for calculating the heart rate on ECG paper? You count the QRS complexes in a six second ECG strip and then multiply that number by 10. Question five, what rhythm is shown in this ECG strip? Sinus dysrhythmia. There is a slight deviation of contraction timing during inspiration. Heart rate is 60 to 100 BPM. P waves are present. There is regular rhythm and a narrow QRS of less than 120 milliseconds. Question six, what rhythm is shown in this ECG strip? Sinus arrest, a sudden pause in rhythm indicates the cessation of sinus contraction. Heart rate is 60 to 100 BPM. P waves are present. There is regular rhythm and a narrow QRS of less than 120 milliseconds. Question seven, what is the pericardium? The pericardium is the tough fibrous sac that envelops the entirety of the heart. Question eight, the left main coronary artery subdivides into which two arteries? The left anterior descending and left circumflex arteries. Question nine, what are the four valves of the heart? the tricuspid, mitral, pulmonary, and aortic valve. Question 10, define stroke volume and provide the normal stroke volume in milliliters. Stroke volume is the blood pumped out in a single contraction. A normal stroke volume is 60 to 100 milliliters. Question 11, what happens during a relative refractory period? During a relative refractory period, the heart is partially repolarized and able to respond to stimulus. Question 12, what effect does beta-1 have on the heart? Beta-1 increases heart rate, force, and automaticity. Question 13, what is paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea? Paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea is shortness of breath that awakens a patient from their sleep. Question 14, what is digitalis commonly prescribed for? Digitalis is commonly prescribed for congestive heart failure, atrial flutter, atrial fibrillation, and supraventricular tachycardia. Question 15, what is pulsus alternans? A difference in the palpable strength of the heart beats. Let's take a quick study break to remind you to drink plenty of water throughout your day. Proper hydration is critical for good cognitive functioning, which you'll appreciate when you're trying to learn all of this medical content for the NREMT paramedic exam. Taking care of your brain will make you a better learner and a faster decision maker in the field. So develop the right habits today. Now back to the questions. Question 16, what is happening in this 12 lead ECG strip? Inferior stemi. There is elevation in two, three, and AVF, reciprocal changes in one, and AVL elevation is greater than one millimeters in two contiguous leads. Question 17. What is benign early repolarization? A fishhook appearance at the J point with a concave ST segment. This is often mistaken for ST elevation. The difference being that reciprocal changes are never present. Question 18, 
What jewels are used for adult synchronized cardioversion? 50, 100, 200, 300, and 360 joules. Question 19. Is pulmonary edema a result of left or right-sided heart failure? Pulmonary edema is a result of left-sided heart failure. Peripheral edema is a result of right-sided heart failure. Question 20. What are the signs and symptoms of hypertensive end organ damage? Blurred vision, headache, epistaxis, and tinnitus. Question 21. What are the signs and symptoms of scarlet fever? Sore throat, fever, rash, and strawberry tongue. Question 22. What is the mechanism of action for adenosine? Adenosine slows conduction through the AV node and interrupts re-entrant pathways. Question 23. What are the indications for aspirin? Chest pain and STEMI. Question 24. What are the indications for atropine? Bradycardia, pediatric rapid sequence intubation, and organophosphate poisoning. Question 25. What is the mechanism of action for dobutamine? Dobutamine increases myocardial contractility, stroke volume, and cardiac output. Question 26. What is the mechanism of action for metaprolol? Metaprolol decreases heart rate, conduction, contractility, and cardiac output. Question 27. Explain the acronym MT-SHIP used in field diagnosis. M. Medication, overdose, compliance, T. Tumor, trauma, toxins. S. Seizures, stroke. H. Hypoxia, hyper or hypothermia, hyper or hypoglycemia, hypertension, hyper or hypokalemia, I. Infection, uremia. P. Psychiatric, behavioral. Question 28. Define shock. Failure of the cardiovascular system, causing inadequate perfusion. Question 29. What are the signs and symptoms of compensated shock? Anxiety, shortness of breath, rapid or thready pulse, pallor, normal blood pressure, thirst, and normal LOC. Question 30. What is hypovolemic shock? Hypovolemic shock occurs when there is a deficient volume of blood in the body. Okay, time for another quick study break. If you're loving the challenge, I've set you with these practice questions. You'll find hundreds more with illustrations in Brainscape's adaptive mobile flashcards for the NREMT paramedic exam. Make sure you download those so that you can efficiently study anytime and anywhere, and you will crush the paramedic exam. Let's get back to our final 10 questions. Question 31. What are the four tasks of the team leader? The team leader. One, clearly defines the roles for each person. Two, asks for a new intervention to be done if it is higher priority. Three, asks for ideas for diagnoses. And four, confirms what members do and is clear about instructions. Question 32. What is bad about excessive ventilation? Excessive ventilation increases thoracic pressure, decreases venous return to the heart, and decreases cardiac output. Question 33. How would you treat an unresponsive airway obstruction? Start CPR. Check the mouth after every two minutes when going to give ventilations. Remove any obstruction with the fingers if clearly visible. And consider a direct laryngoscopy with magil forceps. Question 34. Within how much time of arrival at a hospital should fabrinolytic therapy be initiated? Within 60 minutes or one hour. Question 35. What are the signs and symptoms of bradycardia? Dizziness, weakness, fatigue, lightheadedness, and syncope. Question 36. What dose of epinephrine infusion should be administered for unstable bradycardia? 2 to 10 micrograms per minute. 
Question 37. What are the first two steps to take in an unwitnessed arrest in a pediatric patient? Perform CPR for two minutes and then call 911. Question 38. What is the correct rate of pediatric compressions? 100 to 120 compressions per minute. Question 39. What is the heart rate for supraventricular tachycardia in an infant? More than 220 beats per minute. Question 40. True or false? Grunting is a normal sign in children and not indicative of severe respiratory distress. False. Grunting requires quick intervention. That's the end of our exam prep show on cardiology and resuscitation. To reach full mastery, keep studying for the NREMT paramedic exam in Brainscape, which has thousands more flashcards with imagery and a spaced repetition algorithm that'll dramatically speed up your learning and knowledge retention. Of course, when you're driving, exercising, cooking, or otherwise unable to navigate the app, be sure to keep listening to the rest of these episodes and check out the NREMT Paramedic Exam Prep podcast to rise to your challenge.